Uh, hello, my name is Bill. I build robots out of little pieces of plastic that I usually steal from children's birthday parties, and I love rust, and also sometimes I say things and then stare at the camera mournfully. Uh, we've got mice. Mm, what else? Oh, I say herbal and not herbal because it has a freaking H in it. Uh, you better pipe down if you ever want to get out of that closet. <laughs> uh, cut. Oh, uh, well, I'm, I'm out of the box. Uh, thank you, Tinu from Cajun Craft Astrophy for, you know, sticking me in a box. And kindly pushing record and shooting that intro for me because, uh, you know, I was in a box. So, thanks. Uh, welcome to episode 29. Uh, it's been a while because, you know, I had a, a cold and a, a newborn baby. Uh, but I've still got the cold and a newborn baby. I, I completely forgot how much uh, a newborn baby is, you know. You pick it up, it's and you know, it's in its nappy, and it you know, it's outside of its nappy, it pours out the sides, and it's in its bed, it's on the floor, it's on the walls, it's on you, and your hands, and the, you know, you walk in, it's just like everywhere, you know, and it just, um, yeah. So I made this episode really quickly. I didn't know what to build, um, so I went to uh, you know where I usually go. Uh, to get inspiration. Uh, I went to um, and basically I got a load of toys because I thought you know what's easier than just sticking some toys together so that's what I did. So sometimes I think to myself you know how lucky I am that I live in a world of plastic tat you know it's so easy to get hold of all sorts of plastic tat look at that stuff would you play with that probably not but would you take this and cut it up and make something cool? I mean, yeah, I would. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to basically show you what I bought today in the pound shop. And uh, let's try and think of something to make. I found this, uh, I think it's a Velociraptor with feathers. You know, at least they're kind of accurate there. They're not kind of in denial. Uh, and those wings are pretty cool. I could probably use those for something. So along with that, I picked up a couple of these nerf gun ripoffs these little guns um yeah they're pretty sci-fi you know they're kind of weird and stunted for a pistol but i could probably use them for something else um yeah i'm thinking and then there are these weird things i don't know i always see these in the shop uh, final faction and there's like a load of guns and gadgets for some figurines that i've never ever seen before I mean, that is not a joke. I have never seen the figurines that go with these guns or these uh, things. Look, I mean, these are some alien things and it's for the same brand of action figures. I assume they're action figures. Uh, apparently, look, you can watch an episode online uh, by scanning that thing. Um, yeah, I'm probably not gonna do that, but uh, yeah. This is why I love the pound shop. I mean, I quite like that thing. Kind of looks like a, a worm face, doesn't it? But uh, and that's like a bug body. I have no idea what they're supposed to be. I mean, that's some kind of gun. Uh, and here's another dinosaur. These are prehistera range because um, they're prehysterical or prehysteric terrible. You know, I'm sure it's a pun there. So I'm in two minds whether to do something mechanical or organic. Uh, so I might use this dinosaur, but I'll probably just use these. I did get a ton of these Final Faction pieces. Look at those, look, look, so many random pieces of plastic crap. I have no idea what they're for, but they're not badly sculpted. So I think I might do something with these. Um, I like that one, that's uh, pretty cool. Then look at all those bits. I mean, that cost me, what, £10? Um, yeah, get to the pound store. So I decided I'm going to make something mechanical, but I want to make it for something. And, uh, you know, I've been quite into Planet 28 lately, and I want to make a table for that. So I'm going to just look through, see if there's any kind of objectives I can make. If you don't know what Planet 28 is, uh, go look it up. I'll put a link below uh, to the creator on Instagram because he sent me these books very kindly. Um, 
and I'm definitely going to delve into it. But uh, I think today I'm going to work on something for Stargrave. Stargrave, like Planet 28, is unlike, you know, like games like Warhammer and things like that, where you can kind of make whatever you want to make and the game fits around that rather than the other way around, which is why I like it. So I think after all that, I'm going to make a an anti-air rocket launcher thing. Some kind of 28 mil scale gun that's going to shoot down spaceships uh, with these little dart guns. I can already tell you there's some pretty cool bits in these guns. I'm going to be keeping those for later. I usually get asked what's the difference between uh, kit bashing and scratch building. Um, I mean, I usually, I don't, I don't really scratch build, like that's building something just from raw materials like wood, stone, whatever, you know. Uh, I normally use trash, so that's technically trash bashing. But kit bashing is like this, you know. You take kits, previously made bits, and you kind of cut them up and uh, connect them together into something new, like these little bits here. I didn't make those, but I'm gonna use those in whatever way I want. And uh, for me, that's kit bashing. What I usually do is trash bashing. But it's also kind of a bit of scratch building because I do cut bits of wood up and I cut, you know, bits of card and I, you know, use bits of clay. You know, I build something from scratch using junk or trash. You know what I mean. Anyway, today I'm kit bashing. And I have to tell you that kit bashing is really easy and really fun and really effective. So uh, yeah, if you're kind of new to this hobby, it's probably the best thing to kind of do is just to take toys, cut them apart, stick them together. Or old Airfix model kits, you know, Games Workshop kits, old miniatures, cut the arms, the legs, the heads off the guns, all that stuff, and stick it together to make something new. It's, it's really easy, really satisfying. It's a little bit too easy, to be honest. I feel a little bit, you know, cheap for doing it, but but I wanted to show you just how cheap and easy it is to do, you know, and how effective it, you know, whatever, you know. I didn't have a lot of time, okay? She may be wondering why I look kind of tired in my pieces to the camera and why I sound a bit bunged up. Well, I, I did say to me, you know, I have a cold and I wasn't joking. I do have a cold. Uh, I hope it doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me. It's at this point in the build where I like to talk about cables, big, long, dangly cables with your dad, funny enough. Now to any of my builds, I like to add wires and cables because it adds a bit of scale for something that's 28 millimeters scale, you know? Uh, so take some of this notorious Christmas wire and super glue it together. You know what, I'm just gonna show you. Sometimes when I'm lazy, I don't bother doing this, but if you really want your cables and your wires to look kind of to scale and realistic, you should wrap little bits of wire around like this, you know, in random places all the way along and uh, tie a bunch together. Now that looks like a pretty realistic bunch of cables. If you want to be even more fancy pants, I bought this uh, clothesline cable from the pound shop and I'm going to mix it in with my other gauges of wire, like this Christmas wire and uh, maybe some uh, garden wire. And it's a pretty cool looking cable right there. I think that kind of looks realistic to me. I should probably stop being so lazy and do this all the time. Also, while we're on the subject of cables, I want to talk about gravity. Now, if you have a cable hanging from one point to the other, you should bend it to look like it's hanging, you know, uh, like this. And it's wire, it stays in place. Uh, just, just saying, that's all. And remember that when you stick your cables to your build that, you know, Gravity is going to be pulling it in certain places, so have it kind of falling over things and falling between cracks and you, you know what I mean. Dro drooping, sagging, dad joke. So you should probably do this nearer the beginning of the build, but check the scale against the 28mm character like this guy. Yeah, go on, get lost. You know, it's pretty big, but that's what we want. A big giant missile cannon thing that shoots down spaceships. But it got me thinking that maybe I need a control panel that a 28 mil guy can kind of reach to control the thing. So I made this with a few more of those little bits from that pack of weird bits. You know, those bits from earlier. A 
For some reason, due to making some alcohol inks, I have a ton of felt tip pen lids. So I'm going to use some of those as missiles in the end of my rocket launcher cannon thing. So it's nearly Halloween and uh, I love Halloween. I don't know about you. And uh, it's a perfect time of year to get all that tat, that plastic skeleton tat and Halloween crap from the shops and uh, you know, turn it into something good. And that's what's gonna happen maybe the next episode. But for now, I just wanna mention uh, Monster Bash. So every year, uh, some of the crafters on YouTube get together and they do Monster Bash. It's an event where you get kind of cards like this and you kind of draw some random cards and you make something based on those cards or how you interpret those cards. And they asked me to take part, which was, uh, you know, that was nice of them, I guess. So Monster Bash this year isn't just for the elite YouTubers. Trent at Miscast runs it, you know, with an iron fist. You know, he said, you know, Bill, Usually I don't like the riffraff to kind of get involved in my stuff, but you know, this year I'm feeling quite charitable, you know, and Bill, would you like to do Monster Bash? I'm like, yeah, only if you let everyone else do it. That's what I said. So he said, all right then. And then now everyone can do it. That's, that's a true story. That's what happened. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll get back on with this build. Uh, check the links below and uh, get bashing monsters. That sounds wrong. So, I mean, you know, prepare yourself. I don't want to shock you, but I don't want to really go rusty today. I want this thing to look operational, and if it's caked in rust, it's probably not operational. So I'm going to go for a, like a, like a metallic silver undercoat, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm sorry, all right? I'm sorry, everyone, I'm sorry. So I want this thing to be like a light brown desert color because I imagine it on a desert planet. Uh, but if you see there, I don't really paint all the way to the edge. I kind of dab the paint on and leave some of the metal showing uh, because I still want it to be chipped and kind of old, but I just don't want it to be rusty. All right. When I was a kid, I used to paint these yellow and black hazard stripes on every model I ever made. Uh, I think because of Necromunda. But you know, what's more hazardous than a ground to air missile launcher? So, you know, you know it's justified. So make sure if you're gonna use stencils, do it before your weathering stage. So it gets a nice weathering over the top of that, as well as the paint underneath. So it looks like it's all in keeping. Uh, I'm telling you this because I usually don't. I usually do the stencils as an afterthought and I have to go back and wear it. Anyway, just, yeah, do it before. So I'm gonna talk about something else because I hate talking about the painting stage of a build because it's always the same. You basically just rub paint over it until it looks like it's something. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the t-shirts I made. I made two new t-shirts. It's the Doodle Bot design and a Doodle Beast design. It's hard to explain if you haven't seen the pictures I've posted up previously. I mean, you like t-shirts, don't you? You know, you like to wear clothing. You're not some kind of animal, are you? Are you? But seriously, I spent a long time on the design uh, and I hope you like it. The link should be below. So where am I? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, so I'm dabbing off some oil wash, the excess oil wash. I'm gonna go for some darker oil wash and kind of pretend I'm gonna put that in specific places, but I actually just lather the whole thing in it and kind of dab off the excess because, you know, who has the patience for that? But the good thing about oil wash is it always looks good. Um, so there you go. So there we are, that's my kind of, what would you call it? Like a, a rocket array? I don't know, ground to air missiles? I don't know, it's something that shoots spaceships down on this planet. Not this planet, uh, a planet that doesn't exist. I need to get a life. So the best thing about it is it cost me three pound to make. You know, obviously not accounting labor and time, you know. I won't charge you for that. 
three pound or four dollars for you Americans. I'm not sure, I'm not going to do the uh, currency exchange for every country that watches this, but uh, you know, it's cheap and it's really effective uh, and it's really quick and it looks really cool on the table. So give it a go. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you, patrons, for keeping me going. Honestly, uh, this is my sincere face, honestly. I don't know what face that is. But honestly, yeah, thank you, patrons. I really appreciate it. Basically, you know, all this shit is your fault because you keep giving me money that I use to feed my child and uh, my child gets it out everywhere. So thank you for all this shit. I mean it. Yep, he means it. I mean it uh, as a thank you. I'm going to read all the names of the page. Hold on, they're going past pretty quick. Uh, so, oh, I miss some. Uh, Mongoose, did I already do that? Uh, Ellis Crow, um, Alex Scott, Andrew, F jo Tom Jolly, Luke, Luigi, Luke Guerrieri. I, I, can't, I can't do it. It's too fast. Uh, maybe next time. I'll try next time. Uh, but here we are. Here's my. I'm actually really happy with that. I know I didn't do 90% of that sculpt. It was made by some guy in China. But, uh, you know, he did a good job.